Inkscape is my best friend when it comes to that. So. And they have always been. Uh, so let me go back. I'm just about to be cutting this up and I keep going to other stuff. Sorry, brain's been. Alright, so go back here. So a lot of the things I'm using in here is just for the colors that I, I'm going to be, you know, kind of blending. So I get a basic color and it kind of gets to where I need it to be. And, and that's good right there. All right, so let's get, you know what, let me save this for something later. Save. Point three section two. That's not going to make sense anymore. That's how I uh, organize all of this. So let's go ahead and flatten this out. And so you don't have to export any of this. What you can do here in Paint. And this is the background. We're not using the background, but I'll move it out the way so you can kind of see. Uh, we grab. I can grab this whole thing here, and then we're going to click Edit, Copy, go to Inkscape, and Paste. And there we go. And. I'm not going to vectorize this. I'm just going to show you. So if we did vectorize this, maybe I'll choose uh, 12 colors, like I said before. Trace. Uh, color this. Three. Two. Scans. Matter right on this one. And it'll come close. It's not going to get everything perfect. There is an upgrade to uh, Inkscape. I think it does a lot better. Um, but all of these things play a big part. So threshold. Is going to play a part. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit lower here. Like so. A little bit lower. And then they have other options here. Um, suppress. Uh, ignore small spots in the bitmap, right? Smooth corners. You always want that. All right. This right here. I'm going to lower it just a bit to maybe half. And then try to optimize pass by joining adjacent segments. This, I don't like it. All right, so we've got everything we need. Threshold. The only real things that are, to me, real important, um, make sure you always do remove background. It'll take the white out. Uh, if you don't, you'll have a black outline. So when I, we do import it into uh, Moho, it will have that black uh, that black outline on there. What was the second one? And were we working on that? And okay, we're, that's what we were working on the other one. Was this the second one? Edit. Undo. What was this? What was this one? Section. Um. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be dragging a bag. <laughs> Pulling backwards on a bag, so. So pulling backwards, and I think I was, okay, I remember now, yeah, go backwards. So starting frame was there, right. sorry, I just, I'm trying to remember what I was doing on this thing. Pulling it backwards, like so, and we'll make it slightly like that. So I remember. He's pulling the bag. He's pulling the bag backwards. So, so backwards. Stop here. And here. And move 
making it make it slightly smaller because we're going away from the camera just a tad bit oh, it's way too small there G tad I think that was it. I have to fix his foot. That don't. That's not normal. Six eighteen. Uh, marker. So he's pulling the back. So three, so four steps, five steps. And save it there. And this is for me. Um, since I'm recording this, it's just for me to remember. It's going on YouTube, so if you see this part, it doesn't. It's not part of what we're going to be doing. So find out how long the video is. But uh, since I have the screen recording, I'll cut and clip this. It'll remind me of exactly what that was supposed to be. Sometimes I do forget, even if I have notes. Uh, what scene is this one? This one was what? Alright, so this was the one. So transition from the building. The robots jump out of the crab bot searching then we go to the lighting section for the store on the left so and I apologize this is just a, a reminder for me and I'm recording again so pay no attention what I'm doing here it might not even be in the video so this one is crap bot drops down Three robots go out of the crab bot going towards the back. Two are going here to search the town. Observer is in the corner to the left. This one remains with the crab bot scanning frontwards and there will be a red beam of light that's shooting from this robot shooting towards the fourth wall of the screen starting from right to left enter character will enter the store on the left and will force the shop owner to close the shop while armed and the storekeeper will be fearful, worried, look close up through the window, turning the sign to closed, shutting off the front light, and also this sign, robot that remains with the crab bot is curious why the shop owner is closing suspense scene solo robot walking up to the store to observe what this may be 
guy in corner observing that robot is going towards the store person observing removes the firecrackers from the bag to distract from the robot going and observing here robots expression and anger at the fireworks being shot which is an ordinance so he leaves the shop to observe and control the situation here with the fireworks and next scene will be the shop owner and the character in a home location first shot home location character will be looking out the window observing the robot and the observer's fireworks blinds will open slightly character store clerk tries to escape but character will be unholster a weapon and point it out the shop owner without looking at the shop owner still focusing down on the robot confiscating fireworks onlooker or observer is the contact observer goes to front of shop looking up towards the character ending scene for the shop all right there we go okay so let's go back here oh we're gonna vectorize it but that probably won't matter smooth okay all right too dull and let's go more colors okay Get the black outline, what does that look like? So um, what it does here on the ink tape, it basically takes a, um, each color that consists of the character and it separates it. So if you look here, this would be the shadow of the pants would be here. So that's why that color and, that, and what it's doing is ex examining the color for just that. Uh, part of the the drawing and the blue right is going to be created based on this color here right and that's all it does so every color that's used it's going to give you a full body uh, format and they're all on separate layers so like this brown is going to be based on the brown that it sees in the hair 
right? And then this gray is going to probably be a different offset of a gray, but that's all it's doing. It's just it's, it's breaking all the colors down into different masks based on all the colors that it has collected from your uh, your image here. Uh, and usually, what you could do move that all out of the way. So what I typically would do would be, I would start out with the closest outline I could, which would probably be, let's see, which one has the best option for that? I would say probably this one, but I like this one is less thick. So um, with the outline, you would basically change the color here. So you would click on this here, and we're going to change the color to black, like so. And then you could start making your uh, your adjustments, All right? So. And um, I wouldn't do it this way. Usually, when I get this vector outline like this, the other option you have is is a lot quicker. So let's say here. All right. So if you just take, if say you just wanted to get the vector outline, which I already have, um, you can go in and export this. And then if you want to get detail with the outlining, you can do that without any color or adding anything. And then once you bring, you can bring it back into um, Inkscape with a clean outline of you know everything, and for the breakdowns of the colors, because it'll get as close as possible, but it's not going to get it it exact like this image. So basically, what you could do is you could do it. The uh, the other way, which is a lot of it, it, and it it may not be time consuming, basically. So you would start breaking everything down. You could take these nodes, make them curved nodes, which makes it easier for you to kind of move everything you need to move. And say, for instance, you wanted to cut some. When you cut nodes from here. Like so, it'll smooth it out for you. So a lot of these that are like really sharp or whatever, and you think it'll be uh, real time consuming, it doesn't have to be because um, you can start changing nodes and removing nodes, and it'll keep the form. It'll just make it smooth to where you can, you know, fill in. Same thing here. Whenever you click on these. And you want to make them smooth round nodes, you can do it like so. And whenever you do bring these together, um, when you do your 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 fill, a lot of times what I'll do here is I wanted to get as close as the drawing part as possible, but just clean. Uh, so I'll, I will do my fills and use the dropper tool and since this outline is on the top whenever you do you know do these fill-ins and everything like that you can change that around that's an option bring this on top 
like so or get this out of the way you can change the threshold so if you bring this up or grow now when you fill it in it'll fill it in a lot more so that's a little bit too much right so let's go cut this out of the way and then we're going to bring this down a little bit say 20 maybe All right, that's a little bit better so now when you do bring it down you know most of it's filled in without you know it being a big deal All right some if it's you know too much you can do it like so and again so say for instance we want to go in here and this kind of looks all boxy and everything like that let's go in here oh oh that's right I did join that together <laughs> uh, like so and let's extrude these out here right. and also remember we can remove them all right and it'll tighten up everything for you where you're not doing it all day long where you have to same thing with this all right it's so the neck part it's like so and you can cut out nodes that you know you don't want to sit there and kind of manipulate all day and same thing with the filler parts uh, you can do it that way as well. Same thing here with the hat. Everything's kind of boxy here. So you just join everything you want to join. And to me, the method's probably the, the faster, fastest for me is to cut nodes out because it'll maintain the image. So when you click on any of that, what, what do you want to kind of change? I guess we could use this here. Mm cut them so whatever adjustments you want to make and add nodes or remove, if there's a lot of them you want to remove you can do that you can start doing your outlines that way and say I put this here and then I cut these nodes here all right instead of just moving everything by hand Even when you're smoothing it out, like so. Remember, uh, I won't remember, I haven't mean, went over this yet. Uh, whenever you are moving these nodes, these controllers are going to affect how it moves. And what will happen is if this one here, say you're trying to isolate something and it's like hard to kind of move around, it's going to be based on this. So, all right, so what you can do here, remove that, have a free hand in that way. So when you do move things, it won't be so constrained. Uh, it'll be a lot easier for you to move or manipulate because once you click this, it's looking for a designation, uh, with like an even dex, uh, des one second. Um, so when these are on, it's looking for a designation, and it, it's trapped in. Think of it like um, you're 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 in a grid, right? You have a grid, and only let's see here. It's a broad example, but all right. So when you have these those nodes there on the side here just imagine yourself with a grid and what will kinda happen here is you're moving that node with this on so it's placeholders where some places it won't go to 
So say you were moving, you know, an, uh, make a line here. Use an example. So say you're grabbing onto a node on a line, right? And you really want to have that node. You want to be able to move that node real easily, right? And what you'll do is you'll start trying to move it around, and you want it here right but with this selection it's going to give you either here or here and these are micro like s s small um like grids in there right so just imagine this a very small space so that's what it's doing it's it's only allowing you to because it's looking for a fixed designation it's only going to allow you to go here and here so once you remove this then it allows you to go anywhere you like you can go here you can go here you can go whatever you like but if you click that it's going to it's going to block you into certain spaces that's why um, make sure you can take that off especially if you just want to move things where you want them to move uh, again same thing here with these uh, nodes whenever you remove them it does affect small areas but it's not going to just totally throw everything off so um, yeah so you can do that and again remember whatever you have when you are doing the uh, the tracing you can see how these lines are bigger it's going to be based on the same thing that we did with the threshold and another one you know you want to make that smaller and it'll stick to the outline will be a lot uh, less thick so when you do want to trace it out so many colors it probably won't adjust that much but Click OK. Yeah, you'll see the lines are a lot smaller. So when you let's get to the yeah, see. So when you do just uh, get this out of the way. When you do adjust the threshold, just remember. That's how that it'll be affected. I think those two are the same. Let's make sure. Is this the one we just were messing around with? Yeah, yeah that's it. So. So you see the difference with the lining. This is um the same remember before this was gray right so let's go ahead and make it black so we can get a good comparison alright so you see the, the the lines improve a lot a lot more which will be a, um, probably a lot better cleanup for you because you know how thick these are because you what you'll end up having to do is come in and then oh these are so thick then you gotta come in and, and manipulate a lot more All right so whenever you do um, adjust the threshold those lines are not super thick like they were over here on this one it's a lot 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 smaller on those other lines so on this one technically your cleanup may be a lot faster uh, because of you know the thickness of it, and you know it's a lot cleaner. But again, would would the cleanest up? I'm not doing it <laughs> through here. I, I will take this black outline. I'll, I'll bring it into uh, paint, 
and then I'll I'll make the adjustments there. All right, so I'm not, you know, because really all I really wanted the, the outline, and I may change all the colors on a, a different day. All right, so let's start to go for this last part here, and this is just going to be a quick breakdown. Uh, I don't even think I want to do the other arm, but. I will show you the markers of what we're going to be doing here. And that's the way we cut. Alright, so all the cuts before I get into Moho. So basically, you will have a, uh, a cut here. And, all right, so should be cut here, right about there. All right, so it'll be the cut you'll make for the arm, and then the other cut. you get around the ear all right so and we don't have the other arm but technically there will be a cut here if you did have the second arm behind but um, we're gonna mirror this arm so we're I'm not gonna worry how to we don't have to cut that all right so we got right above the head or right around the arm right and this cut here is going to be a little below where its leg is so it'll be we'll cut it right about there like so right so once we do cut it out show you how it should look oh. never mind <laughs> do it again hate that thing And you can use whatever cutout you want as long as you get this piece here from whatever program you use. So this will look like this. All right. And I'm going to fix that. It's going to be a real quick thing, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. All right. So then we have that. All right. Uh, the next one. Let's see the legs. So basically on the legs. From that cut is already done, so the next cut you'll make is here, All right? So it'll just be this this thigh piece here, like so. <laughs> Did it again. You remember to pick the Kirk layer to copy from. I'm just this layer I'm just showing you where the, the cuts will be 
So that's why I keep making that mistake. So basically, edit copy. It goes here. So, all right, next cut is going to be from here to below the leg here. So, try to get as much as that. Just want to get the black part of the sock, and then like so. Like so. Okay. Right. And we're not going to do the uh, the feet here. I'm going to show you why in a minute. And then uh, the same thing for this leg, right? And we'll do so. That's the one cut. I'm going to make sure we get the and right about there. And I'm not making them perfect, I'm just doing this to show you where the cut should be for yourself. Okay, same thing here, so I'll cut about here. And I'm getting a little less, still getting the shoe. Let's go the opposite way. Okay. And, and it doesn't matter if it overlaps, it's probably better if it does. So, edit copy, and paste, like so. And the overlap is probably better. So, all right, and you would have two arms. So, on the arm, you would have a cut from here where this elbow is. I'm going to take a little bit more, so that cut would be right about there. So from here to here. So let's go ahead and grab that. Okay. Uh, you can have this overlap here. You can grab a little bit more. It's probably better uh, if it overlaps. So then copy like so Get these out of here. Next one here, so we're going to be cutting from the that elbow piece to so the uh, from that elbow to uh, 
What's going on? Oh. That's <laughs> it. Sorry. There we go. So, next cut is going to be from that elbow. Try to grab a little bit more of it and then to this. Uh, you know what? Let's let's do this different. So the next cut will be here, All right? So grab that. Did it again. Okay. Alright. And that goes in there. Did I mess this up? I think I did. What did I, I think I what did I just do here? From here, oh, that me. So just before the glove. Okay. You can grab a little bit more of the arm. All right, so. Technically, with the other arm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And I don't know if you can make those adjustments. This is going to be behind, so. So this one, I'm going to fix it real quick here. And on this, I just really want to get the uh, the roundness of that shoulder. And what I mean around the shoulder is uh, just this part, that round part right there.
so this arm would be underneath and we don't need that Oh. 